Bro, they getting out of hand, bro. I'm just trying to buy my baby some books, bro. Look at this shit. A is for Allie. B is for buy. C is for coming out. D is for drag. These are these children books, going. guys. These are children books. ML Web. You're disrespectful, bro. My kids is just trying to learn, okay? They're just trying to learn. Why are you writing books like this? Can't they just be kids and learn their regular ABCs? What is going on? F is still for family, though. What is going Equality, like, we got a lot. Of gay, like, G is for gay. Like, we got a lot going on. <laughs> Non-binary, non, non what? what the Listen, is this is picture books. Oh, this is picture books. My four-year-old don't know what the fuck non-binary is. Lesbian, they don't know what lesbian is. Why are you writing this, ML Web? You're disrespectful. Read this shit to your own kids. Orientation. Shalom. I would like to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Wakakwadash. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you sincere Akim, pushing his word out across the four corners of the world. Just another news update through the spirit, the power, and the vibration of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. And this lesson the Spirit is going into telltale signs of the end. Which leads me to 2 Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And according to Revelation 11 chapter, the first verse it says, And that was given unto me a reed like unto a rod. And that's referring to the Holy Scriptures, which is that measuring stick. And what we see what's currently happening in current news or current events. We filter out with the Holy Scriptures. And that's by the art of watching. It says in Proverbs the eighth chapter, blessed is the man that heareth me and watch it daily in my gates. So that's how you measure thou the time diligently in itself. And it says, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which goes into the prophetic signs, those tokens, those indicators or proofs, which shows you the validity of the scriptures, which are telltale signs, which I have told thee before. Which takes me right to this article from Collapse.News. And it says, Rampant homosexuality and LGBT perversion are prophetic signs of end times. Which was published on October the 27th, 2022. And it says, As we quickly approach the end of the church age, there are many prophetic signs occurring that point to just how close we truly are to that long foretold transition point into the new age. And a new age is referring to this global transformation, this new world order. And when you read Job the fifth chapter and 12 verse, it goes into how the heavenly father, Yahweh, is going to disappoint the devices of the crafty. So he cannot perform his enterprise. And the enterprise goes into his success by achieving this NWO. So that's what this great reset talk is truly about. And like how I bring out from time to time of this Edomite insider by the name of David Spangler, he wrote a book called Reimagination of the World, a Critique of the New Age, Science, and Popular Culture. And he stated, no one would enter the New World Order unless he or she would make a pledge to worship Lucifer. And Lucifer means light bearer. So in this sense, their Lucifer that they are referring to is a spiritual entity, Satan. He says, no one would enter the new age unless he would take a Luciferian initiation. And it says, one of the biggest and most ominous in these final moments is the rapid rise of homosexuality and LGBT perversion, including the transgender grooming and mutilation of innocent children. And as you can see within this current time, concerning children, you know, they are easily conditioned and impressionable and that's why Esau Edom is pushing forth his indoctrination upon the children, this younger generation, which is his sexual perversion. And it says around the late 1990s, the perversion agenda noticeably went into overdrive. Suddenly, there were effeminate gay male characters appearing in television shows, along with the occasional masculine lesbian characters. Fast forward 30 years and gay has become passe. Now it's transgenderism that has taken center stage. And that was by the means of his most powerful and influential witchcraft tool, his TV programming. And that's by making everybody be acceptable to this new agenda, this gay agenda, in the means of social engineering, which is nothing but psychological manipulation to manage the future development and behavior of a society. 
And that's why you're currently seeing everybody say, oh, I don't have a problem with it now when people come out the closet because Esau is constantly molding the masses' perceptions, their ideas, their opinions to accept this gay agenda. And it says, America in the West relatively swift transition from a decent, orderly, and nuclear family-centric society to a debauched, lawless, and sexually demoralized, nightmarish hell is no accident. And when you read Ezekiel the 24th chapter, it goes into how woe to that bloody city. And that's referring to America, which is codified as Babylon the Greek. And within that same chapter, it goes into, and thy filthiness is lewdness. And that's where you get that sexual perversion from, degeneracy. And you're witnessing how sex is overvalued within this modern society. And that's by Esau Edom utilizing his witchcraft tool by continually putting into the people's faces, making you accept this new agenda. But for the benefit to us as the hopeful elect, by Esau Edom pushing out these wicked devices upon the people, that's bringing forth more decadence in this society. And it says the only silver lining is that the truly born again are about to be plucked right out of it before the worst time in human history commences. And that's that false narrative of Christianity about being plucked out right of it before the worst time in human history commences. Because according to Jeremiah 30 and 7, it goes into about a time of Jacob's trouble. And within that time frame, it says, but he should be saved out of it. So we as the Israelites have to go through the times of Jacob's trouble, which is a time frame that this world has never seen nor experienced before. And it says, until then, we are getting just a taste of the horrors to come as if the current horrors were not bad enough. And driving this transition into the new age is none other than a loud and proud cult of LGBT, which is assuming control over everything. Human warning coloration was rare, even in large cities prior to the turn of the millennium. Homosexual culture existed, but it was private and almost never out in the open, reported the COVID blog. Now you see it in every corner of the country, even in what used to be known as the Bible Belt. It's no coincidence that 9-11 and condition acceptance of homosexual culture commits right around the same time when the Great Reset, former NWO, officially kicked off. And this partakes in the image of the beast which is that Babylonian wine that Esau Edom is perpetuating throughout the whole world. And that takes me right to Deuteronomy 32, verse 32. And it says, For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. So a vine is a plant that bears the grapes from which the wine is made. So in this sense, the man of sin, Esau Edom, or the son of perdition, he adopts his traits from the ancient Hamites. And the Hamites were the first ones to commit homosexual activities. When you read about Sodom, Gomorrah, and those other three ancient Canaanite cities. And when you go to the word Sodom, it goes into burning. Look how these people are burning in their sexual desires, lust, and wickedness. Like these people have an itch to do nothing but wickedness within this society. Then on top of that, you get highly elevated within the society by committing those vicious acts. And the Gomorrah goes into immersion. And when you read 2 Peter 2 and 6, it goes into about the turning of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow. And that's by them being into strange flesh, committing the same acts as you're seeing what's going on in today's time within America, which were those penalties that led them to their destruction. So here comes America being ruled by Esau Edom, the man of sin. It's like he's not spiritually seeing that he's walking within that same shadow as ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, which led them to their downfall. So America's about to get ready to receive divine retribution from Yahweh Bashim Abishai. So for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. And here's the point in verse 33, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asp. And that wine is going into that Babylonian wine. When you read Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, it says Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hands, which had made all the earth drunken, meaning spiritually perverse, spiritually corrupted. And that takes me right to Revelation 17, verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And those kings are referring to mainly the main workers of iniquity that's coming from the tabernacle of Esau Edom. 
the small hats, the 1948ers, the ones that you are currently seeing within the news, where yeah, how about Shima Shah has that spiritual scopeo. Now everybody's seeing the wickedness and the nakedness of Esau's doings, mainly coming from Amalek, which is that chief house of Esau Edom. And they are the main culprits that's pushing forth all these unlawful deeds throughout the whole world and spiritually have this earth upside down. So with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and that's pushing forth that spiritual adultery and the means of that Babylonian wine. And what are some of the ingredients of that Babylonian wine? Feminism, Esau's pseudoscience, his technology, his democracy, his rampant homosexuality and the LGBT perversion. And that's exactly how he has morally corrupted all these nations who have drank the cup of that Babylonian wine, which is toxic for your well-being. So with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So that's why you are witnessing the masses and especially two thirds of our people who are part of that number are being conditioned to accept this homosexual culture, which partakes into the wages of sin. So the kings of this earth are pushing forth a death lifestyle upon the whole world. And that's why you see these so-called rappers, especially these ones that try to portray this hardcore against the image. If they don't accept or push forth this agenda, then they get blackballed. So that's a part of his wine. Let's link that up with Proverbs, the fourth chapter, starting verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. And as you know, when you read Malachi, the first chapter, it goes into why Esau Edom is the border of wickedness. And when you read Isaiah the 34th chapter, it says, Adumia, which is the Greek way of saying Edom, is the people of the Most High's curse unto judgment. So enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. And our people who have sold out into this Hollywood industry or just have sold out spiritually unto the image of the beast, that's going into the path of the wicked. And we're coming to those times where it's going to be too late for our people to turn back and they are going to realize that they have made a covenant with death. So enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Verse 15, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. And when you read Michael the second chapter, it goes into about woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. And when the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand that was bestowed upon them by Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. So for they sleep not, except they have not done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. And here's the point in verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, which goes into his injustice, his unrighteousness his cruelty that he has perpetuated throughout the whole world. And now we are at the end of Esau's chapter and he's been called out. He's been revealed. And he's been manifested through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. So by all these unlawful deeds that you're seeing blatantly being pushed forth out here, and that's how you know through the gift of the Holy Spirit that these are those prophetic tokens or those telltale signs to know that we are at the end. All right, so back to the article and it says, American children born in 1990 and beyond have only known in America where sexual perversion is the norm. The biblical texts make many references to the time in which we now find ourselves, a time where good is called evil and evil called good. And they are referring to Isaiah 5 and 20, where it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, and put darkness for light and light for darkness. And let's also link that with Job the 10th chapter, it started verse 21. Before I go whence, I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. And this is referring to America, which is spiritually known as Babylon the Great. And it's also spiritually codified as many other names within the Holy Scriptures. Example given, the shadow of death. And a shadow is like an outline or a shape or a form that's representing like a dark area. And that's where you get that silhouette from. So America represents itself after ancient Egypt, Nineveh, Babylon, 
Sodom, Gomorrah, Greece, Rome. So America is like a conglomerate of all these ancient kingdoms or empires that once ruled, bowed up into war. Babylon the Great, and that's where you get confusion, chaos, and disorder from. Verse 22, a land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death without any order, and where the light is as darkness. And that also links with Hosea the fourth chapter in the first verse. For the Lord have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh Bashim in the land. And if you don't have that true ultimate knowledge of Yahweh Bashim by understanding his ways via the scriptures, then you are spiritually tuned into darkness. And that's why it's stated in Isaiah the 60th chapter about gross darkness to people, where they have that spiritual veil upon their eyes when you read Isaiah the 25th chapter. So a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. So anytime where you try to do right within this world, and that's by abiding by the righteous standards and principles of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you look down upon it. But if you are spiritually in tune with wickedness, and that's by following the ways of Esau Edom, the son of perdition, then you get uplifted within this world. You get awarded and celebrated. So that's why Esau's turning of things are upside down. So the biblical texts make many references to the time in which we now find ourselves, a time where good is called evil and evil called good, a time where innocence is scoffed at and even criminalized, and wickedness is celebrated and praised. Masculinity is also denigrated in favor of feminism. And I did a lesson a while back. It was going into this article titled, The Emasculation of the Black Man in the Entertainment Industry. And within that same article, it goes into how when the so-called black men, who are part of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, when you are tapped into your masculine energy, that you are perceived as a threat to Esau's white supremacy. And that's why you had movies coming out in the 1960s, where it started off with the pro-militant, the Afrocentric vibration. Then it got diluted and transitioned into movies like Superfly or Mac, where you have effeminate jakes have the long hair as in a perm, wearing the high platform shoes, wearing women's clothing, being degraded as pimps or drug dealers because Esau Edom is definitely afraid of that Israelite masculinity coming from the Israelite man. So that's why you're seeing in today's time, the Israelite man, and especially the so-called black man, being emasculated in the entertainment industry, wearing dresses, prosthetics, makeup, and the list goes on. But according to our power, Yahweh Bashim Abishai, when you spiritually plug back into the scriptures, it tells us Israelite men, show yourselves men, which is a part of masculinity because we worship a masculine power. So masculinity is also denigrated in favor of feminism, which is just like LGBT doctrines are now embedded into school curriculum, religious sermons, and media programming which is all enchantments brought to you by the serpent that was more subtile than any beast within the field, Esau Edom. And it says, it is not just Christianity that links such perversion to the end times. All of the major religions make reference to sexual deviancy and the corruption of children as bright signposts that point to the end, whether it be the end of a civilization or the end of an entire age. And when you read 2nd Ezra, the sixth chapter it goes into how Esau is the end of the world, referring to an eon his age, his chapter, his wicked vibration, that he has perpetuated wickedness throughout the whole world, and that's by his divine blessing, which was rulership. And Jacob was going to be the beginning of it to follow it, which means that we as the Israelites, and more so as the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, are going to be in charge of the global affairs of the earth and the universe, instituting the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And we really look forward to that because something has to give. And that's going to be the elites of Esau Edom being uprooted out of their position of leadership. And it says the wrath of God has been poured out many times already throughout history over this kind of thing. Most notably in the stories of Sodom and Gomorrah and Noah's Ark. So all these ancient divine judgments that happened upon these different places is all being correlated right onto America. 
And when you read Revelation 11 and 8, it goes into about this great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And that's referring to America. So it keep referring to America as Sodom. And again, once you go into the word Sodom, it goes into burning. And you go into the word Gomorrah, it goes into immersion, which is going to be that physical manifestation of fire that's reserved unto this place for judgment. And it says the promise made following the global flood was that God would never again flood the entire earth with water as judgment. He signed this promise with the rainbow. And you can read that in Genesis, the ninth chapter, a seven color light display in the sky that the cult of LGBT has hijacked, stripped one color from and appropriated as his own. So here comes Esau Edom being a fornicator and profane person as he is would spiritually contaminate a holy, beautiful covenant such as the rainbow that the Heavenly Father Yahweh made an agreement or a covenant with the earth that he would never flood the earth again with water. So Esau would defile the image of the rainbow by appointing it to his LGBT flag, which shows you through the spirit this has to be the man of sin. And it says right here, members of that cult do this with pride. It is important to emphasize and when you read Isaiah 26 and 5, it goes into how the Lord is going to bring down them that dwell on high. And that's referring to the elites of Esau, Edom, along with their counterparts, these other nations, that lofty city, which is referring to America. And as you can see through the spirit, America exalts itself with great pride, arrogancy, like these Americans think that no one can be able to take them down. But according to Proverbs 16 chapter, pride goes before a fall. So that's just one component of a telltale sign of America's end, which is pride. And as the Bible promises, God will not be mocked. There will come a time when his judgment falls and this next time around burns it all to the ground. And that links up with Amos 9 and 8, how the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom, referring to America. And he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. And that also can be linked with Malachi 4 and 1, how the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And that day that cometh shall burn them up. And it says, when children are no longer protected from such out in the open evil, all children born around 1990 and beyond have only known an American society where LGBT perversion is normal. You know such judgment is right at the doorstep. So yeah, how about Shema Shah is about to bring great divine retribution upon the doorsteps of America, and rightfully so. So Esau was given many examples from these ancient kingdoms or societies that did unlawful deeds, but he did not want to take heed to it through the spirit. So he has to learn by physical action. And that's exactly what Yahweh about Shema Shah is going to bring unto him. And that takes me to 2 Ezra 15 and 6. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and her hurtful works are fulfilled. So what's a part of America's hurtful works that's governed by Esau Edom? As you can see from this article, rampant homosexuality and LGBT perversion are prophetic signs or tokens of end times. So by measuring these evil times through the Holy Spirit, we are seeing the true telltale signs of America's end which are nothing but spiritual indicators and proofs of the validity of the scriptures. So, I brought this out. You always edify. You always stay strong. Keep pushing forward. Shalom.